the selectmen for our uh, uh, meeting on February 1st, 7 p.m. Would everyone please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation. January, but I forgot we we're already in a new month. Um, announcements tonight, we have Treasurer Collective uh, reminds town residents that third quarter payments were due today. Payments may be made out to the town hall, made at the town hall on Monday through Thursday, 9, to 1 p 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and Wednesday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. or may be left in the drop box outside the town hall door. 2016 dog licenses are, are available in the town clerk's office. Town offices will be closed Monday, February 15th in observance of President's Day. The town clerk's office advised that nomination papers for town positions are available at the town clerk's office through February 9th and must be returned by February 11th. Deadline to register to vote or to change party enrollment for the March 1st presidential primary is Wednesday, February 10th. The town seeks two volunteers to serve on the Finance Committee. Meetings take place almost every Wednesday evening <coughs> beginning at 6 p.m. from January, the town meeting in May, uh, through the town meeting in May. Contact town moderator Les Davis or the executive secretary if interested. The town will be auctioning off our surplus 1980 Seagrave ladder truck on the online auction site, municipid.com. The auction started today and ends on Monday, February 15th. Caution to motorists, reminder that schools are closed during the week of February 15th through the 19th for winter recess. Please take caution on the roadways for children who may be outside and on the roads. And the recent DOR management report has been published on the town's website. Next, we have the approval for minutes and warrants, and we have minutes from January 19th and January 25th, and both were at 7 p.m. So is there a motion to uh, approve the January 19th? I have a correction on uh, second page, second paragraph on the new business. First sentence, uh, the word meeting, uh, I believe, uh, well, I believe I said having a town charter, not meeting a town charter. The sentence should read, the proposal indicates there are 16 recommendations, many financial, and if the town follows them, we will be close to having a town charter. verified that with other individuals. And uh, essentially, if you go through it all, you're ready for a town okay. okay. All right, so we can approve. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes with the correction that Mr. Raposo made? Second. All in favor? All right. Um, Mr. Baker, you abstain? Okay. And the next um, January 25th, uh, Mr. Baker and Mr. Laura were both absent. Um, so, most, is there a motion to approve January 25th? Motion to approve January 25th. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Warrants. Uh, Helen? I don't have anything. Okay. Uh, we have no uh, guest speakers on the agenda for tonight. Uh, so 
So, uh, board and committee department heads, we have animal control officer. Gary? Mm -hmm. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Okay, so where two questions is um, where do we stand with uh, a kennel to bring our dogs? We uh, we have a kennel. We have one. Okay. We still um, we still have, can use the Oxbridge kennel, but I'm also looking at an alternative. Okay. Should something ever you know, develop where it's not usable, right? I so we always have something. Because I, I understand the last time the police department tried to bring a dog to Aldrich Street, they turned us away. She, from what I understand, she had a loose dog inside the kennel, and apparently, I guess it was an, an, an opportune time to go up there. And, but you know, if you're running the business, you can't be doing stuff like that. Right. Okay. So, so we're working on a different facility. An alternate, yeah. All right. Um, okay. And then how how do we stand with with um, an assistant because we're we're taking too much time away from the police department? I uh, I spoke to somebody the other day that. Uh, um, Apparently, somebody that approached Helen. Um, I spoke to that individual. Um, the only thing I, I have is a list of the prior applicants. Yeah, we haven't received any other applications. Well, maybe I might consider how's the, And how's the qualifications for that individual? How are the qualifications for that individual? Uh, I, haven't, you know, I haven't even gotten to that, that okay. point yet. All right. Oh, I never speak to her on the phone. Okay. Uh, she does have some uh, animal experience, but. Uh, okay. Um, and she, she, he or she would need an LTC license to carry, right. um, and also have to pass the Corey. Right. And you know, we're going to check the driving records. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So. Has she, has she come in and uh, I told her to see you, Ellen? Yeah, no, she hasn't come in. All right, so, I mean, that's, those are the, those are as important as the other qualifications, you know, right. so. Right. No. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, we we'll just keep, keep looking, you know. Yeah. And then, um, so aside of those two items, how, how is everything else? Quiet? Or Quiet. People, yeah. Licenses are uh, up to date. That you you haven't found any unlicensed. I know the clerk's office has been doing a superb um, job. Uh, yeah, we, we sent out licenses. A, we sent out a ton of fines. Yeah. All right. Good. I got uh, two two um, residents that are contesting their fines, so I have to deal with that up with the extra court. Yeah. Okay. Where's where's the fine? For an unlicensed dog, what is the fine? Uh, fifty dollars. Thirty-five if they're loose. It's a lot cheaper to just get one. A lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah, a lot cheaper. You know, and some of the most important thing is the uh, the rabies vaccination. Mm -hmm. Above all, especially if it's a pet, you know, and the interaction with these animals. You know. All right, but. Uh, you know, when sometimes things happen and they're beyond my control, you know. Mm -hmm. Understood. No, I know. But as long as we're, you know, we catch it, we're, we're, oh, yeah. we get on top of it. Absolutely. And, yeah, okay. So, um, have you ran uh, an ad anywhere else? I know. I haven't run an ad recently. We had run one before, before Jennifer um, applied. It is posted, it's on the town's website. Um, if you feel the need, I can certainly put another ad. I, I was reading through, it looks like at one point you even had an ad on, on Monster. Mm -hmm. So I was just, just reading through some of the uh, Yep, I can put it on there too. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I have a bit of laryngitis, so my, That's fine. my voice yeah, comes I, I, I do too. 
Um, I just wanted to point out <coughs> the reason why I have outsourced slash regionalized on the agenda is during some budget discussions. Yes. There were some questions about if the town continues to have issues filling the assistant position um, due to the needs during the daytime hours. Is mm -hmm. it something we should look into? Um, and the finance committee said that's you know up to the direction of the board of selectmen. So I, I would don't know if that I would something. agree with that. Um, if, if the rest of the board would agree with that, yeah. I'll make that motion. So, um, so if within, I don't know, a couple, uh, by our next meeting, if we have no applicants, I think we should look into contacting town, other, some other communities to see if we could get daytime coverage. Yeah. It's basically the typical first shift, 40 hour, the 40 hour first shift of the week that you can't cover, correct? So, all right. I mean, I, I I try to monitor the phone, my phone, as much as I can. And, you know. Yeah, no, I know. I mean, I, everybody's got a full-time job, too, so <laughs> we understand that. I've had a lot of difficulties with uh, assistance over the years. Yeah, oh, no, I know. That, we understand. That's why we're thinking of maybe outsourcing that certain portion of the day, you know. So, so well, we in discussion. <laughs> All right, so all in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 I guess that's it, unless you have something you want to know. Okay. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks. Mm -hmm. right. Anybody for public forum? Mr. Marr, you brought this letter in. Um, would you like to speak on it, or you just want us to have this on record? Well, basically, I restated everything that we talked about last, last week. Okay. It's not on our agenda to discuss this. Okay. Only if, and he well, spoke it's about under, it. Under uh, new business, I have the zoning enforcement issues. Okay. Yeah. We do I have the building inspector and the fire chief here to discuss any any All zoning right. enforcement issues. All right. So we'll cover this under that <clears throat> agenda. Okay. It'll it basically fits in. It's right. it'll work. So unfortunately, that's towards the end of the meeting, though. Sorry oh, about that. <laughs> um, Next, uh, correspondence. None this week unless somebody picked up some information on anything over the week. Well, I, I did, but I could do that in a second form. Okay. Yep. So next we have appointments and resignations. Um, and the only thing on tonight's agenda is the, uh, to create the Town Administrative Search Committee. So, and then appoint interested members. So, we've got, um, eleven interested residents. Uh, I've got four, four letters, Mr. Thuart, um, Mrs. Coffin, uh, Mr. Faulkner, I believe, has one. Oh, there he is. All right, Brian Faulkner has one, uh, Judy Monroe, and Claudette Barrett all have a letter of interest in. Uh, is that all of them, Helen? As far as I know. I'm not, you know of any others? Any? Just the name I gave, yep. So, uh, you want to read that charter again to create the committee? Or, I mean, we do um, have it on the minutes. Yep, there is a um, there is a sheet regarding the committee where I kind of took all of Mr. Raposa's yeah. suggestions and put it into so one. So, if we, this it summarizes the charter you read the other evening. Proposed, proposed committee uh, create a seven-member ad hoc county administrator search committee to consist of town residents with 
either experience in public administration, management in the private sector, or with equivalent or appropriate municipal experience in novo government. The charge would be to develop a job description for a full-time town administrator based on available information and published material of similar sized towns. And with consideration given to Millville's unique circumstance and governance characteristics, the job description before posting the position will be required final approval by the Board of Selectmen. The target date is for February 16th. Develop the starting uh, Second point in the charge is to develop a starting salary and salary range appropriate for the position in town of Novo based on a candidate's credentials and experience in accordance with the town's uh, classification and compensation plan and based on the guidance and constraints as advised by the finance committee. Target date again, February 16th. Recommend, th uh, fourth, uh, third point, recommend three to five qualified candidates to the Board of Selectmen for interviews to be conducted by the Selectmen during the month of April, target date March 31st. The in individuals uh, indicating interest from Mr. Roland Barrett, Joseph Raposa, Helen Coffin, Marlon Kuwak, Richard Cordello, Paul Ouellette, Jerry Finn, Brian Faulkner, Tina Landry, Claudette Barrett, Judy Monroe. Uh, I would, uh, at this time, my feeling is that I don't think anyone on the select board should be there on the committee. It should be for, from the non-governmental residents. And uh, so I, I strike my name from, from that list. strike my name that leaves us down to nine uh, we want well we've got some letter some two, two, we have four physical letters of interest in the past we've always took precedence to the physical letters before. Uh. Mr. Chairman, is there a motion to first create the committee? Yeah. <coughs> it, so, okay. so moved. Uh, yeah. Is there a second to create a committee? I'll second it. Can we put some consideration into... Um, well, I think we could put maybe like a... a, a just members. Have additional members. Uh, you'd have, say, seven voting members. And well, I was going to say. Um, you're going to want to single someone out. Could we put some consideration into changing it from seven to nine? We have nine willing bodies. Mm -hmm. It is an odd number. I mean, there are some I prefer other than over than others, but I don't think this is the time or place to get into well. some of those things. I think we have willing bodies. I think they're all capable no. and um, I think some consideration in yeah. from seven to nine they are just given recommendations and final parts over so um, I think that's actually a little more fair way than I was thinking I mean I know we did the um, I've done a few searches for the school committee a couple um, administrators and the superintendent and Jerry how many do we have 14 yeah. on, the, on the superintendent mm. so with a, a strong um, chair guiding them through I think it it can be feasible yeah yeah and people, <coughs> people have lives that they if somebody can't make a meeting at least there'll be eight you know yeah. all right I also have the feeling that uh, this this is not a simple task and we need to consider the work that needs to be done in addition to just uh, bringing people together to 
make a recommendation. Mm -hmm. We consider the work that needs to be done mm -hmm. in developing the description for the, for the job. So, um, all right. So, would shall we am amend the motion to uh, nine a nine member committee and leave everything else? Is that is that yes. okay? I, yeah. I make that motion. And you seconded it, or John seconded it. Is that okay, John? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, all right. Now we can appoint. Did you give me that back? Yes, I did. Good. What did I do with it? Here it is. I put my glasses on. Okay, so. So, motion to appoint the following uh, residents to the um, Town Administrator Search Committee. Uh, Helen, and if anybody would like to hold one, just yell hold and we'll go back. But Helen Coffin, Norman Thuart, Richard Cravello, Paul Ouellette, Jerry Finn, Brian Faulkner, Tina Landry, Claudette Barrett, and Judy Monroe. A second. So you made the motion. Yeah. Motion as I as the names I read. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and Brian, would you like to? Just want to know when the last time you had too many volunteers. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> last time? <laughs> uh, maybe a cookout. You know. <laughs> So Brian, just just for the record, just at some point, just give your letter to uh, yeah, and anyone else. Just give your letter the to Helen. The correspondence I used was your email to me. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, that's that's all. That's all we need. Anything, because that's what I did with Mr. Thua. He emailed and I I just forwarded it to Helen. So. Mr. Chairman, as requested, our assistant town clerk is present this evening. Yeah. All right. And, um, so before we go ahead, could we just um, maybe make a temporary chair? I make a motion for Jerry Finn to be temporary chair for the sake of organizing the group, and then your group can go forward at their first meeting, yeah. but putting a person of charge All right. to coordinate efforts. So you'll be Would chairman for the, for one night or forever if you if that's and what chair you chair, and then let your committee decide what you're going to do from there. Just for the sake of organizing. Somebody's got to post the first meeting. Posting. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Yes, so it is. Yes, it is. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, so now with that, under that same agenda, we have the letter from the, I don't know if everybody saw the letter back from um, the town council. So she laid out all the things we, we need to do. Uh, a vote by the Board of Selectmen to create the position is really null and void. It's, it has to go to town meeting, period. Uh, uh, we, we can do the search committee before the town meeting, no problem. We can interview, no problem. Uh, we can't enter a contract until the morning after the town meeting, if, if approved, um, unless the contract says pending town approval. So little things like that. So Barbara um, is willing to come to our first or well, maybe our second meeting to go over all this. Plus, she's got more than just this to, uh, to give us for information, just to make sure that we're on the right path uh, to meet with the selectmen and the, and the search committee. So uh, if you guys want to meet first time to just organize and figure out what the plan of attack will be um, and then maybe the second meeting invite her or if you want Helen to invite her for the first meeting that's fine too and then that way we can just jump be known no right away the, the proper uh, direction that we need to go in so there's just a lot of red tape that she said we're going to make sure we I'm not sure if that's and the charge of that committee or if it's really the charge of this well, group right, to make she, sure these she'd like to meet order. with both them and us so if 
we go to their meeting or they want to come to our next meeting with and have her come mm -hmm. she doesn't care um, whenever she can make herself available to come and just explain everything that needs to be done so that we make no mistakes would you nice if we could target like, for the month our next meeting yeah. so um the Tuesday the so we would invite you guys for uh, our next meeting, which will be a Tuesday night, the 16th. And then- Do you want to do it during the meeting or before? And, uh, <coughs> probably do, should we probably we do it in a half hour, 6.30 maybe. Can we do a workshop prior to the meeting? Sure. See if she could come either 6 or 6.30 and then we'll base our start time at the, on that. I'd rather do 6. Yeah, and have extra time yeah. then so if she can make it here from there by six that would be awesome if for some reason the 16th does not work for her is there a second option um the following Monday. yeah how about the following monday or and if if another day works uh, we can all just make ourselves available if possible uh, mondays are always better to get bob there mr baker following yeah, monday Probably. You sure? <laughs> yeah, he seems pretty adamant on that one. <laughs> okay. All right. So. All right. So that's the. I think that's it. As far as that agenda, I think we've covered it all. So now we're gonna. Diane's gonna take over. However, you'd like to organize this. Okay. And then do you want to all, all do them all at the same time? Yep. Or? If you can, okay. sure. Let me just print these all out. I'll need everybody to sign after you get them for me. You sign them on paper and we'll be good. Okay. okay. So when you come back, we'll we'll hold the, <coughs> the meeting for 30 seconds and let you do your thing. Terrific. All right. Okay. Okay, about 15 minutes. Sure. Later. Thank you. Uh, next, Executive Secretary's report. Mr. Chairman, the first item, uh, a resident, or actually <coughs> a couple of Excuse residents, um, have asked if the Board of Selectmen would consider videotaping all of their meetings rather than just the regular meetings. Okay. The policy right now seems to be it's just the, the two regular meetings per month. Okay. I don't have a problem with it. Um, we'd have to organize that with cable, obviously. Um, I know Tim's listening, so. <laughs> okay. He gets paid. Too. Yeah, he gets paid, so. So can I have a motion by the board then to proceed with videotaping all selectmen's meetings? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the other few items um, are on the, the blue sheet that I handed you this evening. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to let the board know that the highway surveyor has advised that he's joined the town of Bellingham in a procurement uh, effort for Chapter 90 road work. So that bid is opening later this month. Okay. Um, regarding the land on Thayer Street and the developer, uh, Vincent Cocoli, he is seeking a meeting with the Board of Selectmen and other departments um, to discuss some details of his subdivision and the approval by the planning board. Um, on the second page, I've given you a little bit of information from Mr. Mm -hmm. Layden as to the reasons behind the meeting. Joe questioned whether the board would like to meet confidentially with perhaps one or two representative members of the board mm -hmm. with the fire chief and a representative member of the planning board, or if you would prefer to just hold it as an open meeting and invite Mr. Cocoli in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we, a couple of us can go to the planning board meeting with, with him. Doesn't have to be at our meeting. Well, their meetings are the same as your meeting. <laughs> That's so. true. I forgot, yeah, they're the same night. So, uh, yeah, we, we can well, do it. Right, Brian, we can do it with the whole board. Yeah, the whole board, it'll be on camera. Yeah. The whole town. Because really, it's the whole town that really should be 
informed on that anyhow. So. Okay, and we'll ask the planning board to have representation and we'll ask <coughs> the fire chief to be here as well. Yeah. Yeah. Is that a motion? Second, anyone? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, as I mentioned at the last meeting, we had a, um, an inspection by the Department of Labor Standards. We received their report today. A copy was in your mailbox. Um, there are six corrective orders that must be addressed by the end of this month, along with some recommendations. Um, many of those are easily completed in-house. I can take care of that. There are a couple that do involve an electrical issue. I will have to have electricians come in. Um, and then the rest of those um, are related to the highway department. So I will give Brian a copy of the report. I'm gonna highlight the issues that pertain to him. Um, so that was just for your information. Um, the town officially became a community compact um, with the Baker Polito administration. Select my proposal was good enough to go to Bellingham last week mm -hmm. and sign that with um, the Lieutenant Governor. Um, the town's number one best practice that we had applied for was economic development for the use of 181 Main Street. Um, the town planner, Joe Layden, has been very involved with that and getting that going with CMRPC, so he's volunteered to contact the state and chat with them about the town's best, you know, next steps to take in connection with that. Okay. So Joe is working on that. Um, Mr. Raposa, when he came back from that community compact agreement, um, advised that the Lieutenant Governor had announced that day that there's gonna be an IT grant being released. And that was actually today. Um, the state released um, an IT grant, it's a competitive grant. Um, towns can apply for up to $400,000. Mm. And it's only for the towns who have a community compact with the state. Um, so we wanna really jump on that, um, yeah. especially given the information in the DOR report um, that our software isn't really up to par. My questions for the board are, um, how far do you want to go? Do we want to focus on the accounting and the collections payroll, or did you want to really go for the gusto and upgrade think, all the software? I think the best practice is to unify <coughs> under one umbrella. Yeah. Just, I don't know. If we can get funding to do the whole my only concern was if if we put in a grant application too high, yeah. it might be rejected. I didn't know if we would have a better yeah. chance if it was, you know, small. What was, what was the <coughs> guesstimation again? On. We're meeting with an IT vendor this Thursday to get a better idea of what the cost would be. But from the telephone calls I've made, um, it seems like each for each application and accounting is one, payroll is another. Mm. Each pretty much department is a different application. Okay. They estimate about $50,000 per application oh. for the product and full implementation of it. Yeah, right. Okay. So if we were to go with just the two, the payroll and the accounting, be that would be 100 And so that's training too? Yes. Does the grant um, state that partial payment or partial grants are um, awarded? You know, some it's all or nothing, and then others will say, if you are not awarded your whole what would your top priorities be? Is there any wording within the contract? No, I, I read it today, to I didn't see anything to that effect. Yeah. Either all or nothing. This, well, yeah, well sometimes they'll say, we'll give you this, what will you do if you're not gonna get your full amount? How would you? What's your second choice? They don't have that. Yeah. You know, whether you're raising appropriate, capital planning it out, whatever, you know, sometimes they'll ask those things. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Good question. Yeah, you don't want to go in like what being uh, for, so, for some direction here. Over. <laughs> Recently, I uh, I don't remember specifically the, the town's name, but that was one of their best practices uh, listed. And I think if we modeled ourselves with that best practice, we'd stand a better chance of uh, getting a grant. There was actually information about that on the, um, the grant page today, and they said you don't have to have that as one of your best practices. As long as you have a community compact, there's no additional points given if that is one of your practices, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
well, that's it's one of the frequently asked questions. Well, it's not due to the 29th, so yeah. I mean, can we hold it to the next meeting, get those okay. hard numbers and see what we're looking at? Yeah. Put some thought and consideration into what department and which areas need the greatest focus at this point. Would the board like um, the town accountant and I to sit with all of the departments town-wide and see if they have any, you know, such as police, fire, or public safety, if they have any software needs? Or do you want to just keep it the government? Well, we could look. I mean, because if would. somebody's got a $10,000 need, I want to know. I, I would want <coughs> Now's the time to know about it, you know. Uh, I would want it for a baseline. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, if if we go and find out we need half a million dollars, uh, I want to know now. We'll go for as much as we can without looking um, like being gluttony about it. But there are we also companies gotta... that would do this out of the cloud, which mm -hmm. probably wouldn't be a bad. Yeah, most yeah. of them are on the cloud. Right? They are. Yeah, that helps with security. Rich, you have a question? Yeah, I think you're all heading in the right direction. If you, if you identify the total need for the town, then you strategize how much you think you can get out of this grant. What's the competitive number to submit? Yep. And then remaining, you put in a capital plan and you figure out a way later on down the road. At least you have a total plan for a total, a total package to fix the whole town. Yep. If you get it piecemeal, you know, all the better. Yeah, baseline. All right. Go to that roof. We don't have one. Yeah. And then the last item, it's not on my uh, blue sheet there, but the complete streets listing also came out today. The state is offering funding okay. um, for that. There are three requirements, one of which is that a representative from the municipality go to a training session. The town planner has offered to do that for Millville. Okay. Um, and the other two requirements would be something the highway department would need to put together. Okay. Um, so I will send that to um, Brian. And what that gives you is a $50,000 grant for um, consulting and 400000 for road work. So if that's something you could apply for, that would be great. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and that's all I have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Next, we have old business, the uh, DOR financial report. Uh, one of the questions is to change the Board of Selectmen from a five-member to a three-member. And I, I think last week I, I stated that a five-member can have... Uh, I know a three-member is easier to get you know, a full board, uh, but a five-member, I, I think, brings um, uh, best I don't know for lack of better words uh, more honesty to and, uh, and five five minds working is better than three you know um, and the key that's, word there is work yeah. separation so, into the work yeah but uh, I, I think I'd rather have five minds and eyes on a project than three. It's the same reason why we just boosted up the search committee from seven to nine. Uh, the search committee proves that, that this small town can get the, uh, the right amount of people to come onto a board. And, and, uh, I know right now the selectmen are have a lot more work, but uh, you know, normally, the normal day-to-day -day stuff, and once we actually have a town administrator, it's it's going to be uh, still challenging, but a lot of the work will be uh, fun, you know, trying to create ways to, to bring in revenue and, and, and create uh, projects for the administrator to do and, and just set goals for them you know if rather than doing a lot of the stuff we do now that's stuff that the administrator will be able to do so I think it'll be more appetizing for people to want to get on this board that's that's my opinion I believe it's worthy of conversation 
I mean, we were a three member board community. We went up, took a long time to get up to five. We've been at five for quite some time. Not to say there's pros and cons to both sides, um, but I also think that we're taking a step forward with our administrator. I think there's going to be a learning curve as we get um, the authority shifted in those things. Um, I, I rather put my eggs in that basket at this point and then maybe you know six months to a year from now look at the board makeup look at the civic um, volunteerism um, within the community and the trends of that because there are ebbs and flows there are topics that motivate people to run and not run or be involved um, so at this point I I rather just leave that on the table to deal with the most important things at hand and then not to say not to discuss it but I mean it's worthy of discussion but I I, I don't want to put too much on the town voters mm -hmm. in May I want to focus on what our most important need is and then go forward from there so in my opinion I would say I, I still want to talk about it but I think we can wait for a future date for that I think so too I, I agree I think we could be sitting here next year saying, yeah, we can go with a three-member board, or no, we don't. We want to stay five, mm -hmm. but we'll have a better idea next year at this time. Um, okay, we'll leave that. And then as far as the authority of the town administrator. I think that would be something that um, the search committee and us this together. This is St. Andre could discuss, yeah, with yeah. the joint committee when she comes in. There are so many things she needs to know in order to prepare her article. And I know there was one other thing she said too. Even if we get town meeting vote to say yes and the, and the administrator starts the next morning, their duties as an administrator would not go into effect till roughly November once the attorney general approves town meeting. <laughs> so. So they'd be working, they'd, they'd have to know that <clears throat> until the signature of the Attorney General comes, that they would basically still be an executive secretary power uh, until, as long as they know that, well, getting into the job, there shouldn't be any issues with that. Um, so. so I would just ask the board to give some consideration and thought to that so that when Mrs. St. Andre is here. The board has some ideas as to where you want to go with that. Okay. All right. And that's it for old business. And before we go any further, Diane Lockwood's back. <laughs> I know uh, there's one member upstairs in the planning board meeting right now. Okay. So do her separate. Yeah, and Tina will come down later. And would you all raise your right hand and repeat after me? I. I. State your names. Carrie Jane. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. swear that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully and, impartially and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as a member of the Town Administrative Search Committee. In accordance with the bylaws of the town of Millville and the laws of the Commonwealth. Next, uh, new business. We have the election warrant. So. Motion to uh, sign the warrants for Tuesday, the first day of March, 2016, from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. for voting for presidential preference, state committee man, state committee woman, and ward or town committee. Uh, and that, uh, again, will be at the St. Augustine's Church Hall, Par at the St. Augustine's Parish Church Hall on 17 Lincoln Street. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next. Next we have the zoning uh, enforcement 
issues we have uh, the status with the building inspector and the fire chief um, we have budget needs for implementation and requests uh, and then we have the town moderator item also so chief gentlemen would like to come up each take a seat and we've got two hot seats tonight so I know um, I know you guys know what to do for the enforcement but there's still some issues and in, in, uh, you know what, what we're gonna charge for fines and who's gonna do the collecting and all that stuff is all can we, can I say something yes now? yeah can you start with one piece of property because I know there's a couple of them that you're gonna talk about is that correct okay yeah so, so there's no confusion and I'd like to know where we stand and <laughs> what the people are gonna do about it so the residents know what's going on sure uh, mocked garage located on Chestnut Hill mm -hmm. uh, today you had a court date uh, was continued to February 23rd he is represented by counsel so I can only imagine Miss St. Ives will have to get involved when that goes uh, before the judge. He was issued fines totaling $8,000. Spoke to the district attorney. They didn't want me going there every day and issuing fines every day because they're not going to grant us that type of award if they find him in fault. They more or less told me he'd be given a warning, a date, when to remove those cars. If he didn't do so at that time, he'd be fined if he's found, in fact, in violation. So that hearing's on the 23rd, so whether or not we prevail is a, is a different uh, issue. But I will have to involve legal counsel uh, in some, on some date. Yeah, so okay. That's all we can do for that. Uh, I, I look at the property almost on a daily basis. All the cars still remain there. Uh, he's moved no cars. I did speak to him in person. He's aware of it. He believes he has a case. Uh, before the court, he believes the board of selectmen erred in their judgment, and he's going to contest um, doing business at that address. I have a question: Are all these cars registered or non-registered? They're all non-registered vehicles. Okay. And there's 19, 19 vehicles, two trailers, one motorcycle. That's about it. But there's really nothing more we can do. It's in a court hands. And he's well over the limit of a right. repair garage on how many vehicles we, we can be. We did exactly what the board of selectmen requested. We drew up a criminal complaint, mm -hmm. drafted it, brought it to the court, spoke to the DA. It's in a court hands. Like I said, uh, Mr. Smith, out of I believe uh, Milford, is representing Mr. Fernandez. Okay. And all we can do is wait till the hearing on the 23rd. Okay. So. Every question. Yes. We got it done, and um, it's either he complies, we win or we lose, one of the two. Okay. All right. Uh, the second address would be 31 Hill Street. Uh, I'll give you the fire perspective regarding that issue. We've gone there on four different occasions for four different complaints mm -hmm. regarding mm -hmm. illegal burning. On each occasion, occasion, we have found nothing combustible. I mean, uh, I shouldn't say that. Nothing hazard of a hazardous nature being burnt. Um, he is burning in a small 55 gallon drum. On two occasions it was actually food. On two occasions it was lumber or wood. Uh, not, not hazardous waste, not building materials, nothing illegal. Uh, we've checked the location many other times without a complaint and each time we have found nothing illegal going on on the premises on the burning side obviously if you take a look at the property you will see that it's a scrap metal type of business going on mm -hmm. I've been watching very carefully and notice he has washing machines water heaters lawn mowers grills so he is picking metal but from a fire standpoint you know that's not my issue as as far as the man conducting the business at the address. Mm -hmm. My issue is, is he burning illegally, and what, he, what is he burning? Yeah. So we haven't found any evidence. You know, there's been allegations maybe he's burning wire or other 
flammables that are in violation. We haven't found that. Uh, we got to be careful going out to the man's property with no reason. Right. I don't want to be accused of harassing the man. Mm -hmm. So we've checked the property on many occasions, and it's simply every time we check it, we haven't found a violation. So. Violation of the burning. Of the burning, correct. Of the burning only. Mm -hmm. I'm not addressing the license because that's certainly not right. within my jurisdiction to uh, take a look at. Yep. So we have letter from Mr. Mars that lives on right. Hill Street. I don't know if you, would you like No, I, I'd like to see, uh, I, I'm going to. You can, you can each have, yeah. each have one of these and we can get more from Helen. It, it's obvious that his business, I'll use the word business, is growing because his collection is growing. Yes. Of what he collects. It's getting larger every day and more condensed. I've seen that for the last four or five months. Yeah. And I saw. I don't even know how he gets it there because we check it off and it just <coughs> continues to grow. And so he's a classic picker. And so he's scrapping the mill. Yeah. So that's, um, like I said, a different issue from what I have to look at. I'm looking at the fire side. I simply don't find anything. What he's burning is, is legal to burn and we don't find anything illegal. So I do have the reports, so I don't really have anything else to say regarding what he's doing on that property from the fire side. Mm -hmm. and from the police side, there's, we don't have an issue with that. That's certainly not within my jurisdiction um, to determine whether or not he's a business. Right. So that's simply somewhere else. Mm. Zoning. Zoning, there you go, it's zoning. So he is in violation of zoning, having a business in a residential area. Right. I've been up there several times, talked to him personally, and said, you know, if it's visible from the street, you can't have it. And of course that is totally visible from the street. Um, I've issued him a ticket and done that fine route and that really, um, the only way we're really going to enforce this is to take them to court for criminal action. How okay. Many, how many tickets have you issued them, and what did it come to so far? Is it well, weekly? No. I've issued one or two tickets, I think, to them. But it, it's, it's paper. It has no meaning to them. So I'll, I will send them another letter giving them seven days to respond. You can respond to the zoning board of appeals. If they, if he doesn't do that, then I can proceed again with the following letter that says, you haven't gone to the zoning board of appeals to appeal my decision. I'm pursuing criminal action and that's the road we take down. Okay. down the road. okay. Which is, basically what we do with that. Right. The situation with that is um, you probably should have legal counsel involved with that criminal um, complaint. Right, okay, so. It's, it's expensive, but it, well, it gets recouped. We can't, if we can't let it go because then everybody's gonna start doing right. you know. <laughs> so. I mean, that, that's the kind of case though too is that some of these things have gone on for years and years, and you don't clean them up in a day either. Okay. But that's that's basically how you have to do it. You know, the court has the power to put you in jail or fine you. Right. So. Okay. I just don't want this thing just I, to. I will. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. go away. I want. I, will, I want to make um, sure we stay on this because the residents are not happy, yeah. and it does look like. He's getting away with it. He's get, yeah. um, well, I'm just not saying he's getting away with it. He's not in compliance with the, with okay. the, with the, right. with the bylaws. Right. That's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. right. He's not in compliance. And the neighbors put a complaint in. We see the violation. You see the violation. Right. So we meet, need to move forward. I will copy the selection with all the letters that I have. Okay. Received. All right. And I think one thing we need to be careful of um, I've heard in a couple meetings dating back, um, you know, that the fire department, I'm not saying name, you know, but they're saying, well, when you burn, you know, make it look like a legal burn or, oh, it, 
can be here, but just cover it. I think we need to be careful as the community and the people who are going up there and what we're saying is true to words because then what's related to the neighbors or the residents up there is like, well, they told me I just had to cover it. And the truth always lies somewhere between oh, right. individuals. But um, I just want to be sure that our employees and our workers are very clear as to like this is a priority to have it cleaned up for both sites and that we're going by the letter of the law and not finding loopholes for anyone to continue because they take out of it what they want to hear <laughs> when they're when you go up there when it's written though it's and that's and i think that's the that proof is right there we, we and pictures. Yeah, we do respond every time someone calls. We check the address. Um, like I said, every time someone calls, we find nothing hazardous being burnt. Yep. So there's really not much Fine. we can do. It's uh, a couple occasions of actually food on the grill. So you know, I understand the smoke may have different colors to it, and that's why people may be calling, or maybe the smell is something different. The regular wood being burnt. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if it's not there, um, yeah. I simply can't make it up. Right. But as, as far as the zoning issue, though, there's that's, definitely violations. I, absolutely. That's, that's, right, but that's on my shoulder. Yeah, that's, that's, that's on the commission. Business growing. I've spoken yep. to the man myself, and mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to go anywhere. Yes, sir. You know, I, I can't speculate as to what was in this container. It could have been grease. It could be anything. But the bottom line is when we go, it's simply not there. Now, I'm not saying he's not burning anything he shouldn't burn, mm -hmm. but I think at the end of the day, they really have to continue to call us if they believe there's something illegal being burnt. We'll certainly check it out. Would you know if he has a scanner or not? I, I wouldn't know that. I've driven by and stopped without a complaint. Yeah. Thinking I'm catching burning something. I haven't caught him. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know, you know, what it is inside that container because it's a 55 gallon drum. It, you know, unfortunately, I believe he burns pallets as well, or pots of a pallet. Mm -hmm. You don't know if there's oil on that pallet, where it came from. From business, some business may have been automotive related, and it could be grease on the pallet. Could be anything. Um, certainly, I just don't know because I haven't caught him burning anything illegal. So, and I've looked inside and looked at the ashes. I don't see any metal in the ashes. So, I, I, I think my recommendation would be to keep calling us when they see something. We don't mind going. Keep calling us and we'll keep checking it out. And, you know, yep. So, I, that's all I can say is keep calling. He, he, he does it scary. Specific in your call, like the smoke is dark or black, or the smell smells rubber-like or plastic-like. So now that becomes an official piece right. of your phone call in, rather than I think he's burning illegally. Okay. Then you, you, those claims are very specific as to what what you're seeing, what you're witnessing. Mm -hmm. So that may <coughs> whether it helps us later in court or whatever. This, but I would continue to call, but be specific as to what you're seeing or smelling. Um, so, anything else on this property? No. One step at a time. Mr. Step Morris. Time. I just want some clarification on one issue. First of all, uh, my understanding is that you're not allowed to burn a 55 gallon drum to begin with. Secondly, um, I do know I've had some of the downdrafts from that property, and it's pretty noxious. It's not just wood. I've smelled it. 
In your letter because I think yes. they forwarded to the um, conservation. Just, just for your information, you can go and check the map yourself. It's open to the public, and they will give you all the information you need. I understand that, but I know that when Roller lived there, there was an area to be told to be careful over there because that's all wetland. That's going to be on the map. Angle. That's going to be on the map. Yeah. If it's there, uh, you are open to that to get it anytime you want. So, what do I do when I find out that information that in fact he is? Oh, you, that that would go to conservation, which we we have sent this to conservation yeah. already. So then, and then as, if you remember, the commissioner did say in, earlier in this portion of the meeting that he's going to send them another letter, giving them seven days to um, set up a meeting with the ZVA. And if he if he fails to set that meeting up within seven days, then we'll we're going to unfortunately have to go through the court system and and that's the proper channel unfortunately it's not the fastest <laughs> channel because they, 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 they're very busy that's what you said he's not in compliance and he's going to move forward to make and it he's right. not going to allow um, a tent operation either you know if it's against the zoning it's against the zoning whether it's in a tent or, or in the open it's not going right. to i just had one one question mr Mars. I'm um, reading this letter, he mentions trailers on old Chestnut Hill Road. Are those the trailers in the parking lot, the Mark's garage you're referring to? Okay, thank you. I was already in this day and I counted 22 vehicles. Oh, well, could have added one here and there. You gotta keep up with it, bro. I gotta yeah. keep up with it. You know, it took a lot of photos and what was there? He may have added another one. Yeah. Um, yep. You know, he's still working there, so he comes and goes. So, yeah. you know, he'll have his day in court. Yeah. And we just figure that out. So we can just. But he's, he's legal repair shop. He is a legal repair shop. And I, there is a limit on how many unregistered vehicles he can have for that. Yeah. That should be. Like three or four, right? So no, he is. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's definitely not 20. <laughs> no. They, they, have, so. they really haven't moved. Yeah. So he, right. he's aware. No, I know there's weeds growing around them, so they've been there he, for not, a long time. He's not trying to disguise anything or trying to hide anything. You can tell he's very outspoken. Yeah. And like I said, he's going to have his day in court. Yep. And that's when we'll decide who's correct. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the easiest <laughs> yeah. way to put it. You know, he's, no, he's, he's, he's hired, a, he hired an attorney to so, you know, um, spread our opinion. Yeah. All right, so that's those two properties. Now, how about Milk Street? What's... Can I ask one question on this? Mm -hmm. How do you keep abreast of what's going on and, and the activity to challenge what's going on in the neighborhood? How do we keep abreast of what is happening? With letters, phone calls, uh, any of it? Mm -hmm. um, we could... The, the residents could contact the building office. Chrissy yeah. is here during the day. Yeah, right. And she's pretty familiar with um, what the building yeah. commissioner is, is Yeah, doing. the building department secretary is here from 9 to 1, uh, Monday through Thursday. And she can update you with anything that's going on. Cause the, the I believe anything I send out is public record. So yeah. if, 
Yes, so it's until I it gets into litigation, everything's public. Once it's in litigation, oh, then it'll be not until the case is settled. But so yeah, so she can give you anything that that we give to them. All right. As oh, far well. as Mark's garage goes, uh, the public they can certainly go to court on the twenty third. It's in district court in Uxbridge, yep. and they can watch what occurs. Right. My experience is it will be continued, and it'll be continued on yep. several more times. I know that's the unfortunate that's part. That's why. So I, that's what I'm they talking may, about. May court go for takes forever. Because exactly right, it could take five months. Yeah. To get it done, so mm -hmm. I'll certainly give reports to the board of selectmen if something occurs on the twenty third. Okay. So, public will know. So we can do that every time there's an action. Okay. So we give the information to the board. Mm -hmm. It's about all we can do. Okay. And do we have any on on Milk Street? I looked up the previous building <coughs> information or, or one from way back mm -hmm. that said that it, that was an established business and it was allowed. However, um, I could write a letter and say that that building official didn't have it right. That, you know, the original zoning allowed for a contractor to have a piece of equipment on his property to build his house and to go from here to his job, develop it, and come back. You know that a contractor, not a corporation, or you know, he was his own boss. Right. So this is up. a business that has more than one employee, which is not allowed in a residential zone. Um, so I, that's how I would pursue that. Do they have a business license from our town? I've never signed anything for that property, and I'm, I'm, no. I'm ten years. I mean, previous back in the, you know, the late nineties. Well, there again, that would make it a legal business, and um, since we zoned, we zone, um, made our zoning uh, bylaws, what two two years ago. Mm. If it was illegal then. It's illegal now, so we can. But it's not like it. he's pulled a the b business license. See you how know, there's some people who operate out of their home; yeah. they get the business license. They don't even have one of those. Well, the, a business that's certificate with the with the assistant town clerk. Yeah, yeah I don't know. If um, he, that's really just for the name. That doesn't give him the right to run the no, business. No, but I'm saying, does he even have one of those? That I'm not the sure. Town? I can check. I don't. I don't, I don't The, the last the Six last name seven. would be Carlisle, Mr. Carlisle. Yeah. Sixty-five. C R I S L E. Six milk. Six, Six milk. milk. Right. Milk. Yes. Carlisle. I don't remember conducting any inspections there, so I don't think he does. Yeah. And um, I know I know one of the neighbors years ago. Um, I because it caught my eye and I was like, holy cow, because it was really cleared. Where before it was like a couple trucks, but at some point it really got cleared. Um, and they said, well, yeah, there was a lot of wetlands and that he just kind of pushed and covered, like whether it was deemed wet or whether it was just kind of wet between the properties, but they pushed and I said, well, you really need, I don't know, but you really would need to send a letter. And basically it was kind of like, I prefer not to deal with the individual. That, that was addressed, um, maybe, yeah, I think that was addressed three, four years ago with Amy Southern, they addressed that, the wetlands is on the right. Yep. So I think he stayed away from that. That was on the right hand side, yeah. coming back maybe three or four okay. years ago. Yeah. So he's not there the on that part anymore, anymore. But he's added certainly more trucks. She lives alone, you can't uh, blame him. more trucks I've ever seen. Yeah. Um, a lot. Well, Especially business is good. So no, it is. But I mean, can afford to buy a commercial property and yeah, it's still yeah. there. But if he doesn't even have a business certificate and going by the name of a business. I don't have any businesses registered. So Milk Street, so he, under the name Carlisle. I believe okay. it's listed under the name of a lady. But none for Milk Street. 
Not that I'm Milk Street. Not that I'm Milk Street. So not even having a business no. name. So to say I'm doing business, I, I was approved by the so building even, inspector years ago. He doesn't even have a certificate for a business right, within our it, community. Because all, all the clerk's offices, it's just that you're a DBA or wherever you mm -hmm. are. Just to maintain the address for your business. Yeah. Right. That's it. But even still, if he says I'm doing a business, you would have at least that. Yeah. The minimum. Okay. So not having that just says but I'm just doing whatever. Construction work like that, excavators and stuff, doesn't fall into the home occupation. You know, you can be a carpenter, have a pickup truck. That's your that's office. Your, that's your <laughs> office, and you're moving. You know, you're doing all your work. You're not having customers there. Or you're not having a lot of equipment there. Mm. You know, so. I just want to make that distinction. That you can have a business in residential zone if it's a quote unquote home occupation. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we understand that. And yeah, I would we hope also so. understand that that's a little more than a home right. occupation. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, all right. Okay, well. So I'll let you know what happens. Yeah, see and where we can go. And I'll post you on what to, uh, Okay. Very good. Thanks. But there are right. other other violations in town, and I will continue to yep. take pictures and, and send letters for those things too. <coughs> All right. Wrap it up. Um, like Great. I say, it does take uh, some lawyers' fees and some yep. litigation, and it's that's. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got to do what's right, and sometimes it costs money. Mr. Chairman, I know when the building inspector met with the finance committee, they asked him if he had enough hours um, and oh, yeah, uh, right. to do all this enforcement. Mm. Um, is that something you wanted to discuss with the board? Because um, this budget season now, this <coughs> is the time to. <laughs> well, it's kind of a, a great unknown because yeah. you can go to court and sit there for three hours and have your meeting. Or, you know your judgment there for 15 seconds or <laughs> yeah. postponed, but so we still wasted but three hours. I think what time. we're wondering is if do you have enough time right now uh. to do your day to day stuff? But we understand if you go to court for four or five hours, we're gonna pay you right for that time as, as if you were doing an inspection for your hourly rate. But I mean, we're, we're just talking about the. the hours under that stipend to, to get all your and and my answer to that is I I really don't know yeah um, pretty new in the yeah in the you know I've been on board for six months now yeah so I would think that um, we'll just have to see how it goes but you know yeah um, all right. I tried to because we don't want to shortchange you. Yeah. We don't want to shortchange the town for you not having enough time. We don't want to shortchange you, you know, for your labor either. Right. You know, so. And and I will you know submit my hours as I, I <coughs> see that they are. I mean I've done that before. Mm -hmm. with, you know, going on inspections on Fridays or, or putting in some yeah. hours on Fridays, mm -hmm. which is my day off. Uh, in, Uxbridge, but okay. um, so once you get the form letters down, basically it's it's changing the name, changing the dates, including the pictures, and and you know so it could go pretty much standardized. Mm. But like I say, you do need the legal counsel um, with you in court. Just yeah. to, okay, you know, I've been to court. In Worcester, that's where it usually ends up, and Milford is there with their zoning enforcement agent and lawyer, and you know three or four other people right. yeah. to uh, you know enforce some um, you know order or something. Yeah. But, All right. <clears throat> uh, one more thing, Helen. Um, I'm going to need for Miss Sainage any piece of paper ever generated. St. Andrew. Oh, for the attorney, for Mark's garage, whether from planning, from the board of selectmen, 
She's going to have to have the entire package. Yeah, right. Like I said, he's represented by counsel now, so they're going to request through discovery everything we have. So I do have some. I don't know if it's everything. Okay. Uh, we need to go, go as far back as we can. What about the, uh, the DVDs? There's, there's uh, these presentations to the board, select board. Well, yeah, he was here in a couple of meetings, um, and one of a couple, and cable can produce those DVDs as well. I, I would gather everything we possibly can because it's, like I said, because he's represented by, a, by an attorney, he's taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. He's just not gonna allow me to go in there and present the case. He has the attorney to you know, represent him and get his license back. So yeah. we need all the documentation that's right. saying why we- I think we need our attorney we're then. Yeah. We're gonna need our attorney. Yeah. But she's gonna, she has to have that information before she walks into court. Right. Um, so she's probably going to request it. So if we can get the early jump on that, okay, and get that information, and you'll be in touch with her yourself. Yes, yeah. if you can get it all over to me, uh, <clears throat> I'll speak to her directly. But I don't know what's out there, so yeah, okay. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, before yes. the building commissioner leaves, during the budget meeting, uh, the finance committee was questioning um, his ability to keep going with the enforcement if it if it needs the next step in going to court. And Mr. Lynch seemed a little hesitant with proceeding to court each time without the board's support. Mm -hmm. So is it, just for his benefit, is it the general agreement of the board that he should proceed to court and with town council on every enforcement issue that he finds, or would you like to address them on an individual basis? <laughs> I, think, I think, personally, I mean, I don't, know that particular job that well but I think it makes sense to have him with the legal counsel at the court date it's his discretion uh, right he'll well, know whether it needs legal or not so it would be his discretion I mean sometimes he'll go to court and he does it legally right. that happens sometimes yeah um, you know you can but always I, be surprised when what I think they're going to you know postpone it and then they don't and then yeah. you're what, caught what, there what I suggest, representing yourself I guess my opinion is you let Helen know that if you are bringing legal, at least we know where we well, stand with. You will know too. Court dates and everything else. So. Yeah, that's how I would leave it. You'll know. I mean, but it's going to be your discretion what you need and what you don't need. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. I mean, you know better than us if you need to be there. Okay. And I mean, I think you know we hired you to because you know your job much better than we do, so. If you're looking for our support, you have the board support. I, th I, th I think one of the problems. agree to that? I think one of the problems has been is that the zoning bylaws have not been enforced. And then we are, we are left with these bigger messes than if we had them off at their first violation. So if we as a town have put these zoning bylaws on town mm -hmm. meeting floor and accepted those, then we need to be ready and prepared to enforce them for the whole community. So I don't have a problem with going through to court because that's that's what we've you've been charged okay. by town meeting vote when those bylaws are accepted. Yep. And the cost that comes with it hopefully will recoup when we are successful in court. So I will support. Okay. Support. So all right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Next we have legal requests from. Mr. Davis, our town moderator. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, the board. Les sorry, Davis, sorry about Street. the long wait. That's all right, no <laughs> problem. The reason I'm coming to you tonight is I'm requesting, I made a request of you, and I'll explain uh, my reasoning behind this. I requested uh, to contact town council in order to determine I would like to see us uh, elect a, a, an assistant town moderator. I know we can do that at each and every meeting. We have that. I have that authority to ask that a town assistant town moderator be be appointed or be elected. Mm -hmm. My question was, if we ask the town meeting residents to elect an assistant town moderator, does it have to be at each and every annual meeting? Or can we do it one time for a three-year term? And uh, because 
at an annual town meeting, you can't tie the hands of a future town meeting or the residents of a future town meeting, right. in a, so, so to speak. So that, that was the question, was to whether or not uh, we, can, we have to do it each and every town meeting or you know, one, one time at the annual town meeting and put them in for one year or can we vote to put him in for three years or her? And so that was my request to uh, uh, the executive secretary. She was hesitant about forwarding it on to the uh, town council because she didn't want to not do that without your permission. And I can understand that, okay? I know that we've spoken before and you've given me the authority to go directly, directly to uh, town council and just inform the executive secretary. But I wanted to run it through her first, so to speak, because they're more, you're, she's more familiar with the budget than, than I am as right. far as your line item and your legal services. Yep. So I, didn't, I don't want to jeopardize your, uh, your line item for a legal counsel. I think we're good for this year, huh, Helen? We're close. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well. We're not as good as we've been the past few years. Yeah. I don't well. think this is a, going to be a long I think it'll be a very short, a very short inquiry. Conversation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably be an hour charge. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. And we just changed, and we're in lower prices now, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I make a motion to approve the request. Second. Any other? All right. All in favor. All right. Aye. All right. Aye. Thank you. Also, uh, along those same lines, mm -hmm. I and I'm requesting your, your opinion as a board of selectmen. I'm thinking about submitting an article for annual town meeting for an article for a position for assistant town moderator to be placed on the ballot. And we establish both, we elect both a mod, uh, town moderator and assistant town moderator at every three years. That way, if the town moderator is sick, comes in, uh, incapacitated to do whatever, the assistant town uh, moderator can step right in. Plus during the meetings they can, they can uh, one can run some of the articles, another one can run the other articles and then both of them keep up to date on things. Now would it be a good idea to stagger the years so that in the event you get two brand new electees, we they, could. <laughs> one, at least one of them would know <laughs> What's going on? I think that's. I think that's. Uh, I don't think the term has to run coinc You know, coincide one with the other. Yeah. I think they can be staggered. Yes, but every but three years. Them, but, but I think it has to be every three years yeah. for each one of them. Right. Yes. And then that one. So yep. however we got to word it. So. Yeah. So I just wanted to see what your opinion was or your recommendation. Oh, if I you like the idea, if you're. I think that's good. This. Yeah. Okay. And it'll give you more help. Okay. Right, because you are get you paid split, a lot. Are you going to split your hundred dollars? <laughs> <laughs> that would go into the town moderator bu a budget. <laughs> they'd have their so own. They'd get fifty dollars. They, they uh, the town moderator, assistant town moderator, uh, <laughs> operate under the, the same budget. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, You're welcome. Diane, one. Oh, the Mount Claudette's there. She was one of the. You'd like to swear her in. Thank you. Uh, okay, well, thank you everybody for coming. Uh, oh, wait, Joe, you had that other thing we wanted to go over on the members' forum? We were talking about it before the meeting. <laughs> well, no, for, for the select board, uh, I just have an announcement. Yeah. I had a couple, but the, the, uh, the announcement I had on the compact is pretty much covered. But uh, I just want to mention that uh, last uh, Thursday evening, I attended the school committee meeting. And basically, it was... Uh, Involving, I can't hear. Paul, Paul, can you guys go in the hallway because John can't hear. Paul, uh, yeah, Joe, because we're still having a meeting. Basically, uh, the uh, elementary school president, uh, principals came and made their presentations, 
But prior to the meeting, um, Superintendent Himmelberger uh, saw me and he approached me and he said, uh, I was thinking about you. He said, we're going to do a maintenance tour of the elementary school on uh, tomorrow, which is Friday at 11. And uh, he said, uh, you're welcome to join us. And so I volunteered to do that. And uh, we did. And I, I took some notes. And this is, this is all uh, having to do with this budget season. Um, and uh, just to prepare the, the town uh, and, uh, finance committee and the select board. Uh, some, now I'll go through this real quick. Uh, the first area of concern was uh, the student drop off area in front of the uh, main entrance. Uh, this was plow damage there, the curb, roadway, and, and the concern there was that, uh, the, particularly for the smaller children, uh, uh, getting out of cars and, and the like, uh, mm -hmm. if the, an injury were to occur, uh, and a claim re, uh, resulted from that, uh, the principal wasn't uh, sure if that was on, already picked up on an insurance inspection report. And if it had been, uh, we'd be, you know, we'd be responsible or liable for the, uh, for the injury. So that was the main concern there. The roadway condition at the rear of the school is in uh, much uh, disrepair. The surface is all broken up. One area is sunken, and in wet weather, um, it floods out, so small vehicles uh, can't pass through there. Well, no question, Joe, on that. If they use that as the main that road, I've always said, never looked like it was constructed for the, that purpose. And I know I'm going to lose a lot of mommy friends for saying this. But with I the fire access. Yes, I don't think that should be a daily access drive around kind of thing because that, I mean, you look at that road, it's just... It's not a road, it's a fire road. But that every, so you pick up your child, if the buses are loaded, you can't pass in the circle. So they go around the whole school, they come out at the preschool area, and they leave. That is used as a daily, daily, not in the mornings, but in the afternoon. That is the, that is the route for all of the parents leaving. So chief, chief. that roadway... Um, Why don't we have the chief take a look at that and let, let him make a determination? Go, she, what are you speaking about? I just want the back of the elementary school, by the yeah. basketball court where the parents right. drive at the end of the day? Right. They're saying the, that um, that roadway is... Um, the condition of it is not good. But I said, I don't think that roadway is constructed for the purpose of being used for today. It's narrow. Could you give us your, well, go up there and take a look at it? It's really beyond our control. Uh, the school department makes the decision to allow the parents to travel behind the school. And the reason why they do that, when the buses line up, it is the reason. The buses line up, there's about five buses. All they all turn on their reds, and from that point on, no cars were allowed to pass. But yet, the parents have already picked up their children, so now there's a bottleneck. There's nowhere to go, so they allowed the parents to travel through the back, around the back of the school, and exit out the side. It alleviates the traffic. It alleviates the wait, because mm -hmm. no one wants to wait, and you can't certainly go against the one way. So the only way to allow the traffic to move on is by the back of the school. A lot of parents bring their kids and pick them up on a daily basis. Yeah, but that doesn't mean it's right, Ron. What I'm but, saying but is- I mean, if, But, but if we make that. that as fire access- Right, right. That would be, it should be fire access traffic. only. Yeah. And not for mommy's cars and everybody else. I mean, it's not gotta, that much. I don't know what it. the repair is, but we'd have to repair it to the state uh, for daily travel, not for emergency access. Yeah. The problem with it is very winding in the back. It's not mm -hmm. a straight line or a simple curve. So I, I have to agree, it probably shouldn't be used for that purpose. Well, then we need to make but, it so they don't use it. You know, that's something to work out with the school department. Yeah. I don't know how to go about stopping them from But I'm just saying, you know, when, back of your school. when we talk about the, the state of the maintenance of the, I think that's one that we need to look at. I, I didn't mean to 
that is how it gets started. <laughs> no, that's that's all right. So can <laughs> mention the things that uh, you're going to be faced with. Yep. Just, right. the only, just keep in mind that uh, by allowing the cars to travel behind the school, it eliminates a lot of frustrated parents from waiting uh, for the buses. So what's it going to cost? The way this policy is, is when get my violin, once the right? first okay. group comes out, the buses all turn their lights on. So they have to let it load all the grades. Well, you know what? That's a good thing because it's safe. And that's right. the way, that's the law. So they're going to have to be patient. Okay. All right. So I, but I just think we have to look think, at the cost of that yeah. and I what think Joe's, our purpose of that roadway is. I, I, I think Joe's uh, purpose, though, Sorry, was to Jeff. just let us know what yeah. we're facing yeah. for yeah. financial. Yeah. It's, it's, and also, it's in, not, in that vein, um, Mr. Langtoad has uh, discussed this with a highway uh, surveyor, and, and he was told at one at one point in this process here that uh, the road work needed at the school would have to be done in four stages. And it's been a while since uh, Mr. Greento, uh, Mr. Langto has uh, received any input from, from the highway. So that's it, that's all I have to say. Uh, good news <coughs> on the uh, 10,000 gallon oil tank. Um, the reason it wasn't holding pressure was a leak in the line. Um, but above ground. above ground at some point, I mean, uh, going forward, perhaps the replacement should be an above ground tank. Uh, capital project. A capital project. And, and that's, my, that's my point, exactly. We should be <coughs> thinking, uh, uh, including this in a capital project going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we've got three or four more years or whatever. But, uh, mm -hmm. Do we know for a fact that the cost of that tank would be less than 25000 because I thought we had gotten an estimate and it was less than 25000 which put it back on the school. Yeah. Does it, is the cost higher than 25000 for a 10,000-gallon tank? Uh, I wouldn't know, but I don't remember the, <coughs> that estimate being more than that. Yeah. Uh, you? Yeah. No. I don't we, remember we, what it I said. it went back to the school. Right, because if it was more, I would have already submitted that. <coughs> I do know that uh, the cost of the electronic equipment to monitor the level in the tank, mm -hmm. uh, Greeny indicated to me it would cost about $11,000 just for that. That's not built into the new tank, no? Or it's additional equipment? No, if they would do it on, on, on this tank. Oh, yeah, on this tank. I well, the new tanks are double wall tanks anyway, so you can't buy a single wall tank. Okay. Uh, but the general consensus was that that tank is probably good for another five years. Fire suppression water tank, terrific news. Uh, the consensus there was that uh, it's, it's good to go, uh, provided that uh, North, uh, North NWS continues with their two time a year inspection. I think that was for, for, for three to five years. If they kept up with the inspections, but I think five years, we're gonna have to start looking at replacement. Mm -hmm. Floors, uh, front office, principal's office, and reception area uh, needs to be recarpeted. The seams are being held down with duct tape. We brought that up. Front front door entrance, vestibule, and the. Side door by the cafeteria, rest of you, that rug has, uh, should be replaced. And I think they're going to do that in the routine summer maintenance. Is that, is that a safety concern or, or it, it, The one in the front is all ripple. All right. Okay, so that's different. A cosmetic. No. Yeah, it's a trip fall. No. Um, Don't work that one. It's 20 years old. <laughs> After 20 years, you sometimes need a new rug. Yeah, because it is approaching 25 years, I think, now. 92 we opened, yeah. Okay, the next, next thing is a big, big deal is the classrooms. Uh, we we uh, flooring them. Uh, Mr. Langto had it scheduled to do four classrooms <coughs> per year for over a year period, and the approximate annual cost would be $16,000. Uh, 
listening to uh, Mr. Himmel Himmelberger, he said, well, we probably could save a lot of money if we did them all at one time. Because that would be a oh, capital expense. Because then we'd be paying for it. Because yeah. then it becomes a capital expense. So, he was preparing the... Uh, he was, they wouldn't, the school committee wouldn't save a lot of money. <laughs> uh, as of late, the last few years, especially doing stuff with, with, with weatherization and that kind of thing, they have window problems there with, with leakage. They're not closing right. The, the plastic guys are breaking. And uh, I mentioned that the MSBA, if they plan to do anything with, with the windows, they have a, a program to, to take care of that type of issue. Um, Big surprise here, the building's fire alarms, the chief might be interested in this, need to be upgraded. Yeah. Yeah. They're not up to standard. What? Why do they need to be up? I, I don't know, but that, that's the comment they made. Who, who made, do you know who made the recommendation to them? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I'd like to know that. But again, uh, the, the Alan Himmelberger indicated, he said, well, I think MSBA has a uh, program to cover that. Well, if they want to pay for it, yeah. well, go ahead. Just letting you know, that's it. Um, okay. Other, uh, other implications on our budget planning for this year. Uh, chapter 78, uh, the uh, superintendent was uh, not too pleased with the Hearing the fact that Chapter 78 was only being increased 1.6%, uh, but we're going to end up paying for it anyway in terms of uh, uh, unrestricted government aid is increasing to 4.3 for local communities. So give us a little bit more money so we can put it back. Um, <coughs> transportation, uh, uh, transportation aids for a few uh, out-of-district students, that's not going to change at all. And the final budget presentation, uh, the total budget presentation will be made to the school committee on, on the, the 11th. Um, Did you say May 11? No. Because <laughs> our meeting was before that. Febu February, <laughs> okay. February 11. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and, oh, that's a uh, Thursday night. The superintendent indicated that he would contact uh, Mrs. Coffin for, uh, to set up a date to meet with the select board. That's the news from the top of the hill, the yeah. Essie right. Street Hill. So, <laughs> so on March 7th, I saw through the parents group that um, Dr. Himmelberger is having a... Hmm? Mr. Oh, is he a doctor? Mr. I was having a state of the schools, so he's having dinner for the residents at Millville Elementary. <coughs> he's going to give a, um, a presentation of where the school stands. So that may be interesting. We have a selectman meeting that night, but it may be interesting to hear that presentation or hopefully they're taping it. And this is supper with the superintendent. Supper with the super. What day is that up there? The 7th of March. I think it's at 7 o'clock at night because I, I noticed that we have our meeting and we wouldn't be able to attend. Um. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would. So, well, if it's, if it's going to be in the auditorium, Video well, the the <laughs> the. Uh, but I'd be here. But you'd be, be here. here, and you're in a Lone Ranger, right? Well, I guess I can get Jesse see if he's available to do it. Well, I don't know even if we shifted our meeting to for Tuesday of that week, and if we wanted to pop up, well, or ha hold it earlier, or I, I don't know. It's something to think about. Um, they're like I said, they're they're doing dinner for the residents and doing the whole thing. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see because I know their, their thought process of possibly regionalizing from pre-K all the way up to 12 is something that they've been looking at. So, 
So maybe uh, we could consider moving our meeting up a day. Or earlier, depending on what the agenda. If it's light, we can get more information. I'll put it on the next agenda. We can't vote yeah. on it now anyway. I'm sorry? We, we can't vote on it now anyway. No. No, because this isn't on the, the This is discussion. I don't want to push it back for, you know, not have Bob there if we're going to be dealing with some other issues, so. Yeah, right. Okay. Very good. That was it? That was it. Okay. All right, so our next regular meeting is uh, February 16th at 7 p.m. And we'll be doing signatures next, and then we will adjourn immediately after. Yeah, she gave me all those. I don't know why. I've got a question for you. With the email. Because I know you're a professional at getting to New York City. Okay. Oh, okay. Let me just make sure I'm not going crazy. Chief, yep. Today you said. I didn't see it. No, Friday? I'll check when I get back. Oh, this is an update. I get the original one. I'll check it again. Keith's going to follow up with the Yeah, the one you said. Keith's going to follow up with the fireworks. Just see if I would follow up and that was fine. Yeah. Okay. okay I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll check it. Okay, that would be great. A letter from it really depends if um, some the White House today I was just making him tell him to get to the town clerk to see him. Unless I'm for some room to open. Oh, for that, yes. They'll only schedule like 60 days out. Yeah, to post to me. So I'll I think I'd have to post the agenda. I'll just say just for one meeting. Yes. Would you sell those? Probably we'll never get that far. I'm trying to pull up her name, her email, because she sent it to me. The, the service. No, she wasn't here tonight. Would you get no. the peanut butter ones? Here you go. Tell me, if you can find all the information you possibly can. I'm not getting connection. I know if we had them in the front office, they would only last five minutes with you. I know the fireman came over. We could stop the fireman. All right. Throw a bunch of boxes. I can imagine you did. Mr. You. Baker, was it the March 7th meeting you won't be at? That is a... I guess the first one in March. I'll be all right. Yeah. You think of all the heavy ones in the court? It's going on a cruise. February... Yeah. It's on the map. What's the most violent crime I've ever seen? Okay, that's a Monday. Yeah. I'm going to comment on it. Well, a lot of people were posting. Are we going? Oh. Um, didn't I just sign a bunch of these? Oh. Seven of them. Seven of them, okay. How many is there? Seven. Seven. That's what she gave me. Yeah, no, he was very respectful and polite and a
accommodating when I spoke with him. And I, we sent him the certified letter. I don't know. Everybody savers. Motion to adjourn. We need it too. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.